have invested their good money uh, and uh, the company is responsible to manage their resources and to earn and to give uh, dividends out of their uh, investments. So I want panel to uh, discuss more on uh, this specific uh, requirement. CFO and company secretary are barred to attend um, such board meetings where the board thinks that their participation is likely or may tend to impair discipline and harmony of the company. So the board has given some discretion that if they think that uh, there is some uh, important discussion which the employees should, be, should not be the part of, they can and they ask the uh, company secretary and CFO to excuse for that specific agenda. Mandatory requirement for annual evaluation of board and committee members. Aapne to hume employer se phir employee bana diya. Ki hamari evaluation hogi. Maine kaha sir aapki evaluation pe aapka increment nahi lagega. Employee ki evaluation pe aap increment decide karte hain. So you just don't worry about the, uh, about this process. This is important. That the board members must be evaluated. किसने क्या परफॉर्म किया कितना कंट्रीब्यूट किया आप सब ने देखा होगा कि डायरेक्टर्स रिपोर्ट के अंदर देयर इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट दैट अटेंडेंस ऑफ द बोर्ड मेंबर्स इन द बोर्ड मीटिंग्स इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी डिस्क्लोज्ड कुछ ऐसे डायरेक्टर्स हैं हु हैव नॉट अटेंडेड अ सिंगल मीटिंग ऑफ द बोर्ड सिक्स मीटिंग्स इन अ ईयर बट नॉट अ सिंगल मीटिंग अटेंडेड बाय अ डायरेक्टर सो आई थिंक दैट डायरेक्टर डोंट डिजर्व टू बी ऑन द बोर्ड इफ इन अ होल ईयर if he is not attending the uh, meeting so annual evaluation is must for the board and the committee members as well uh, towards their contribution made uh, in the board uh, board responsibility to formulate policy of significant matters that was also the part of uh, code uh, 2012 we have retained that specific clause audit committee Uh, more, more stringent requirements have been introduced and uh, now the chair of audit committee shall be an independent director. Earlier in 12, 2012, uh, it was preferred to have a chair of audit committee by an independent director, but now it has been made mandatory. Audit committee to include at least one member who is financially literate. Uh, I think this way to... चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स बैठे हैं क्लैपिंग होनी चाहिए कि एटलीस्ट वन फाइनेंशियली लिटरेट मेंबर हैज बीन आस्क टू हैव टू बी ऑन द बोर्ड थैंक यू फाइनेंशियली लिटरेट हैज बीन डिफाइंड एज अ पर्सन हु इज़ अ मेंबर ऑफ रिकग्नाइज बॉडी ऑफ प्रोफेशनल अकाउंटेंट्स एंड हैज अ पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट डिग्री इन फाइनेंस फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ और इक्वल इंस्टीट्यूशन आदर इन पाकिस्तान फ्राम अब्रॉड सी एफ ओ एंड सी ई ओ will attend the audit committee meeting only on invitation they are not the part of audit committee anymore human resource uh, and uh, remuneration committee there are two types of committees included in the code uh, few of few have been made mandatory and uh, in few we have recommended to have such committees uh, mandatory committee is human resource and remuneration committee Uh, code 2012 required that uh, majority of the members shall be non-executive directors. Same uh, condition is retained. However, the chair of the HR and remuneration committee has been given to independent directors, and committee must meet at least once in a year. a uh, brief tor have been introduced for uh, this committee uh, one of the important tor is the evaluation of the board and committee members nomination committee this is the committee which is of recommendatory nature this is not a must to have uh, but company is at liberty regarding the composition of the committee they can choose the directors um, uh, non executive or the executive or independent uh, they uh, they are at liberty to choose uh, the structure uh, main f- main uh, tor of this committee is to keep structure size and composition of the board under regular review the size of the board uh, which is required for a company keeping in view the size of the company business of the company is now the 
mandate of this nomination uh, committee. Risk management committee has also been made a choice for the um, company. Uh, this is a recommended one uh, and TORs includes monitoring and review of all material controls, financial, operational and compliance. Risk mitigating factors, uh, robust and integrate, integrity of the financial information is ensured. Uh, this is the job of the risk management committee. Appropriate extent of disclosure of company's risk framework, internal control system in the director's report. Director's report must disclose the uh, um, extent of the work that has been conducted by the uh, risk management committee. Um, the CFO and head of internal audit. Qualification was prescribed in 2012 code. It is uh, more elaborated now. Uh, three years experience for the professional um, accountants. Uh, and I think uh, Rahman Saab has the main uh, lead in this. He has actually pushed us, SCCP, to at least create some difference between the professional accountants and the rest of uh, the uh, fraternity. So five years post-qualification, postgraduate with five years experience uh, is now a must and uh, graduate with seven years experience. However, the discretion of the commission is here added. Uh, for a graduate with seven year experience, uh, it's the commission discretion to approve that the qualification is uh, relevant or not. I've received a uh, few queries that whether article ship counts in uh, this experience or not. So my answer was plain no. Mm, sorry, but that's the effect. Uh, regulatory responsibilities and relevant laws have evolved, therefore the, it is expected the CFO and head of uh, internal audit are able and competent. That is my wish, uh, not, the, not the part of uh, these uh, regulations because uh, just uh, before an hour we were discussing the role of head of internal audit and CFO, that we are focusing on the role of independent director. However, whether the CFO and head of internal audit should play its role independently or not. Because if CFO or head of internal audit just puts his foot down on any transaction which do not directly relate with the company's business, such as if a director's son buy a car and send bills to the company, whether CFO should approve that voucher or not whether head of internal audit should pass that transaction and do not highlight that transaction in its report or not. So the role of CFO and head of internal audit to be independent is uh, very important. Foreign qualification experience is not restricted um, as regards to the qualification prescribed for the um, head of internal audit and uh, CFO. Director's training program um, says that at least one director certified under director training program in 2012. However, this has been accelerated and it is expected that by June 2019, at least 50% directors should attend that director's training program. 75% uh, uh, till 2020 and uh, till 2021, all directors are expected to go through the director's training program. For a newly appoint, uh, appointed uh, directors, one year's time is given that they should qualify that program within one year. And in order to cope with the requirement of female director, a new clause has been introduced that at least one female executive must be trained uh, from the year starting July 2019. So that after a period of time, uh, uh, female directors may be a step towards independent female directors can be introduced. Uh, another requirement that has been added to at least train one head of department starting from the year July 2021. When all the board members have qualified their director's training program, then at, at least one head of department should be trained uh, to have uh, maybe uh, to be included in the board of uh, directors. 
Disclosure and compliance, uh, there is no requirement to have director report in the company's ordinance for quarterly accounts, but Code of Corporate Governance says that quarterly financial statements must have director's review uh, with it. Uh, the disclosure given in the compliance statement requires number of trained, name of the trained directors, name of directors and their categories, executive, non-executive, independent, and uh, the committee's and, uh, member names should be given in the annual report. Uh, companies are encouraged to post on their websites the significant policies of the company. And another red light, the key principal element of director's remuneration policy. Lots of questions I have received. Why to disclose key elements of the director's remuneration on the website? What's the utility? Why you are exposing directors? So, Ibrahim Saab, I need your guidance in the panel session more uh, why this requirement was added. Statement of compliance made simple and um, report and explain approach introduced in the compliance report. Auditors review report, which, has, which is auditors are required to give their review report on the uh, compliance. Now the, these are made the part of uh, auditor obligation regulations which are in the final stage. A relaxation from the code uh, has been introduced and also a penal provision has been introduced because now the Code of Corporate Governance is a part of law. So any non-compliance will lead to penal actions. So after all this exercise and 15 years of corporate governance regime being introduced in Pakistan, there are still challenges that SCCP feels in the implementation of these regulations. Main, all of you know that is the family ownership structure in the businesses. Interlocking directorship used to retain majority control, obtaining proxies, major shareholders are on the board uh, always. Need to educate companies and their majority shareholders about the corporate governance regime, that it is in their benefit, it is in their interest of the shareholders, whether majority or the minority. The business will expand. You will attract other, uh, other independent investors that might join hand, which um, will lead to expansion of the business. Necessity and the responsibilities of independent directors. Lack of awareness among companies and the shareholders. Uh, on one hand, we need to uh, educate the shareholders and the company that independent director is a must for your business growth. On the other hand, we need to teach the independent director that he is an independent director and he uh, is there to make his independent comments and to give independent decision on the board, not to say yes with the majority, yes. Uh, but uh, this is one of the key challenge. Lake of diversity in the board, I have earlier talked, our board is Abaji, Ammaji, Beta, Beti, need to have diversity on boards, different uh, qualifications. Uh, and finally, each and everything cannot be made a law or included in the code and cannot be measured objectively for the purpose of gauging compliance. So crux of the discussion regarding the code is that code of corporate governance practice needs to be strengthened. Priority to improve compliance with the code must be given. Reviewing regulatory shift from listing regulations to the Companies Act. This is very important to understand that now it is no more a part of listing regulation and non-compliance may not lead to no action but a penal consequences from the SCCP. Private sector engaged to take the lead in improving corporate governance practices because public sector maybe we can hope uh, will follow the rules and regulations uh, soon. 
We need to increase awareness in the business community about the good governance structure. And the, this is in the benefit to improve uh, image and potential to attract investors by adopting good governance principles. So my conclusion would be that raising the bar of corporate governance practice is a constant endeavor. It cannot end here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Abit, for, uh, for the detailed presentation. And now I think we have a panel discussion uh, uh, for which I would like to invite Mr. Muin Fuda, who would like to, who can lead this uh, session. Uh, Mr. Muin Sab. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you, ICAP and the board, inviting me to moderate the session. It was in 1999 when the first chairman.